Brownies leading O Canada and the Star Spangled Banner here at the Rico Coliseum as the San Antonio Rampage and the Toronto Marlies get set for a Saturday afternoon here at the Rico. San Antonio has been doing well lately and the Marlies here at home are three and three in February, Bob. Well, they are in just uh, three and two in their first five games of this 10 game homestand. One of those victories were back on the 5th of February against the San Antonio Club, a 5-4 shootout victory. But as you said, San Antonio, six consecutive wins coming into this one. They're out of their building for 10 consecutive games on the road. As the rodeo goes to San Antonio, they get shipped out onto the road to the rampage. They've been terrific in their uh, uh, truck so far, no question about it. The goaltender for San Antonio, Michael Hauser. He has won four straight. He's 9-5-0 with a 2.37 goals against. And at the other end of the ice, the ever steady Drew McIntyre. 22-13-2 over the season. And we are underway here at the Rico Coliseum as the Marlies try and bump themselves up over 500 in February. The goal straight off the top. Way down. Looking at it upstairs and upstairs is uh, really over at well, the penalty box. The, the referee, is, I think, is going to wave it off, but just take the puck to the net. Michael Duco goes hard, and so again does Jared Smithson. I think he's going to get credited with it. And when the referee looks at this, I believe this is going to count as a goal as it gets away from the goaltender and in past him in in a hurry. He's right on the back of the net, and I don't understand if he's going to say maybe he was going to blow his whistle and, you know, turn, or overturn this, but he's going to take a look at it from the overhead camera to see what transpires. But as you just said, just 12 seconds in could be a big boost for this Toronto Marlies club looking to get off to a good start in this hockey game. T.J. Luxmore, Mark Lemelin are the referees. Kevin Hastings, Paul Reed, the linesman. Luxmore is the one having a look at it. Well, you can see the puck go into the net. And, I mean, that's the big thing. And I guess it's uh, whether, you know, he's going to wave it off to goaltender interference because on the play, Michael Duco goes down on his knees and bangs into the goaltender. And from this angle, Duco kind of hits the goalie there. And then the puck's in the net, and the referee is looking down to see where. I don't think he saw it go in, but it bangs. It gets in there. Actually, I believe it's going to be Tyler Biggs who's going to get credited with it as the puck squirted free, and he banged it past the goaltender, Michael Hauser. And 12 seconds in, I believe it's going to stand up as a goal, and the Marlies should be up 1-0. We talked about it this week. It is a goal, and the Marlies up 1-0. We talked about it this week with Tyler Biggs, with Jared Smithson, Mike Duco. We talked to that line, and one of the things Tyler Biggs said in the conversation was that how they're going to score is through mucking about in the front of the net. Well, you're right, and the big thing is, is that, you know, I know that we at Leafs TV, we talked about this line on how good they are defensively, but they need to chip in offensively once in a while. They get it going here early, 12 seconds in. They remain out there and still going after it. Here's Biggs with another shot inside of the net. Smithson goes after it. Tyler Biggs getting the credit. It goes all the way down the ice and is picked up. And will be brought back for icing. They're going to knock it in at 10 seconds officially. Well, interestingly enough, uh, you get off to the kind of start where you cough up that first goal, then you ice the puck, and you're just 32 seconds in, and you seem like, holy smokes, what's going to transpire here? Not a good feeling when you're a road team, and that happens right off the hop. No doubt San Antonio trying to shake it off. Here's Spencer Abbott picking it up, feeding it out front for the Migo, and redirected over to McKay, but he never did get his stick on it, and Hauser poked it away. They'll chase it back into their own one. end. Domingo going after it. Brennan one, one, moves one, it around. One. Marshall five, chips it five. back up to Jerry Domingo. And the Marlies move it up, out, and then dump it in. That'll be picked up for icing and brought back. Yeah, T.J. Brennan doesn't quite get to the red line. And as a result, uh, the Marlies get charged for icing. Uh, they've got to make the adjustment as 
Brandberg gets sent back in, but a nice save right there by Hauser after giving up that early goal. He makes that right pad save and then uses his stick to make sure he chips the puck away from the Marley player, charging and looking for that rebound. Off the draw, Gilroy hammers one towards McIntyre. He makes the blocker save and it comes right back up the boards to Gilroy. Abbott takes it away, comes through center, leads it along to Jerry Domingo, gets deep into the corner, picks it up, throws it back to Spencer Abbott. It gets by him and Gilroy gets there and takes it away. Abbott will go to the bench. Well, he talked about Spencer Abbott maybe being a guy that was a game time decision. He's in the hockey game, but looks like he's ailing a little bit, favoring one of his legs. Uh, doesn't look to be skating up the par thus far in the hockey game, but you need him in the lineup because he, out, even out, at out. 80%, he can give you a lot of offense. No, no, no. After it goes Brandon Colson, who's done a pretty good job of providing offense so far since his come over from Manchester and Ross with a turnaround shot that Lebo picks up on the other side. And plants off the goaltender. Ross goes after it again, puts it up along the near board to Holzer at the line. Andrew McWilliam, rich shot in the net, stopped by Hauser. Oh, I like the way the Marlies move the puck around in the offensive zone. You know, they do a good job. You get it in down below the goal line, and Brad Ross takes a look up and he sees the point open. It's that quick bank pass to uh, Holzer, the cross ice pass to McWilliam, the shot on goal. Good puck movement, take pucks to the net. And I know that Coach Steve Spot worked on this this week in practice of making sure, move, shoot the puck from everywhere, get pucks to the net, crowd the net, jam the net. It paid off in the first 10 seconds with the goal, opening goal of the hockey game, but showing again here that they're not afraid to put the puck to the net. Kevin Marshall throws one at the net. And you talk about that, Bob, and you know, it's an interesting thing. They haven't had too many full practices over the course of the last month and a half, being on the road at uh, most yep. of January, and then, of course, coming into February, not really getting a lot of time with the All-Star break, and they finally got a couple of real practices this Well, and, and the big thing with that, Todd, too, is the fact with this 10-game homestand, it is time for rest, obviously, to get the body going, but then get back into that practice mode down the stretch here now, because you got to get your game in order, and I think that this is a great opportunity and a good start of this one here to keep this homestand in a positive way. Long one comes in on McIntyre. Brennan one, 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 one. The far board. The man trying to get to it there. Chopped off the board. Brennan left it behind. Shaw tried to get to it real quick, but Maggie covers it up and moves it right back up. The rampage off the boards and in. McIntyre gets a stick to it, slows it down, and Marshall chops it back up the boards for Devan, and he lifts it out of the zone. Heading back to Rampage, long stretch pass to Wilson. It goes off his stick and Holzer has to come back. What? Moves it to McWilliam briefly. Gets it back up to the line. The Rampage there to hang on to it. Gilroy moves it down the wall, throws it toward the net, but it goes by everybody. Back out the other side. Biggs trying to get to it. Chopped ahead by Holzer and Biggs moves it down the wall. Wilson goes back. Holzer has to retreat. We've got a penalty coming up here to the Marlies. Tyler Bates is going to go to the box. He knows it as he heads to the box. The referee hasn't even made the signal on what the call is. And Tyler Biggs knows that he is the culprit. And it's going to be a two minute for high sticking. And right there, an easy call is the shot to the head as John McFarland gets the stick of Biggs in the head area. And uh, the Marlies forced to kill off the first opportunity of the power play here. San Antonio coming in, the 23rd ranked team in the American Hockey League, 15.7% against the Marlies, 10th ranked power or penalty killers, 83.3%. Trocek in the circle to take this one against Smithson, who wins it, but it doesn't get very far after that. Whitney moves it back down the wall. Trocek trying to set it up, but a bad pass. Smithson tips it. Here comes Jerry Amigo, shorthanded, tried to cut in by himself, but Trocek was able to follow it up and pick his pocket back the other way. Trocek, couple of moves to get inside the zone. Crab moves it back up to the line. Here's Whitney with it. Little pitch and catch and a long shot that goes off a boot that's picked up by Greg McCaig and sent for a ride. Well, the Marley's penalty killers always do an outstanding job of getting in shooting lanes and make blocks and don't allow the puck to get all the way through to Drew McIntyre. Another great example right there. And clear it all the way down the ice. A lot of talk on this penalty kill unit of committing to it. 
that is probably the failure of any penalty kill unit is when you're not willing to step in the way. Here's Lebo after it. Brings it back into the corner. Whitney back up high the point. Goes cross ice. Whitney again at the line. Looks for Trocek. Here's the one time out front and McIntyre stopped that one. He had a doubt on it, but he did do it. Well, Ryan Whitney, for you know people around that are watching this telecast, the former fifth overall pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins back in 02. 30 years of age, 480 National Hockey League games under his belt. He signed late in the summer with uh, the Florida Panthers, uh, but hasn't been able to get any real games in the National Hockey League this year. And since he's left Pittsburgh, he's had a real tough time with some injuries. Trying to get his game back on track here in the American Hockey League. Smithson puts it up the boards. Petrovic keeps it in with some extra effort. Stick platters to the ice. Domingo, Smithson, up along the far boards. It squirts loose to Jerry Domingo. He takes his time, blocks a course, and sends it down the ice with 30 seconds left to go in the extra man for the rampage. McKeg with some pressure. Dumped in. Platters up along the near boards. Petrovic again at the line. Moves it. Looking for Rallo. Beyond him, he reaches for it. A little pressure from Josh Levo. Here comes TJ Brennan on the captain. Back up the wall. Levo right to Greg McCaig. Up through center. Time ticking away as Biggs ready to step back on the ice. He does now. We're at five on five with 5.40 off the clock in the first period. Brennan, a little backhander up across the line. After it goes Smithson. Looks to hammer one, but hangs on. Throws it through the crease. Here's Granberg up the other side. Mike Duco moving it to Smithson. Round behind the net, he gets squeezed. Granberg backs off, and the Rampage pick it up and try to break out with it. Shore takes a bit of a hit. Percy goes after it. Does some good work to get it to Granberg. That pairing is as responsible as it gets in the American Hockey League. 6.20 off the clock. Two first-year players, too, really, you know, melding, melting together and really becoming a terrific pair. There's one that was looking for a chip. Out of the corner, Granberg shakes it loose, finds McKeg, and now he, Abbott, and Domingo work down the ice. Abbott on the right side. Throws it out at McKeg. He tipped it, but it went wide. Here's McWilliam. Trying to move it around for Abbott. Gilroy moves that away and back up the line. Holzer nearly kept it in. Rampage on a change. And now Corbinian Holzer will find Spencer Abbott. He leads it along to Domingo. Hangs on. Domingo pushed off of it by Shaw for a brief window there. He had an opportunity to take the shot. Yeah, but... and I, that's what I thought he should have done there, Todd. Shoot the puck. It's never a bad play. You're right dead center of the ice. You know, 28 feet out. Shoot the puck. Levo fights for it. Gets it loose. Abbott reaches out for it. Gets behind the D. And a good effort on Petrovic to get the stick out and tap the puck away. You're darn right. Abbott Your best the tool shift. as a defenseman, your stick. And right there, Petrovic with a long reach knocks the stick and, you know, stops that opportunity for the Marlies. It looked like Spencer was Abbott was going to be in. Cozen winds up, lets one go. Scramble out front, comes back up for Marshall, moving it to Brad Ross. Back to Marshall, tries to get some room, works down the wall, throws it toward the net, and Brennan chipped it out front, but it went over top. Cozen tries to get his stick to that one. Levo comes in to have a fight for it. Cozen still wrestling for it, shakes it loose, and now he and Levo try to work to get some space. Back up for DJ Brennan, cross ice Marshall. Throws one down off the boards. Brennan comes at it at the other side. Whitney taps it along, but Josh Lebo, the only one behind the net. He dishes it back out front for Marshall. Bit of a wobbler. Gets on an edge at the boards. Picked up by Cozen. Back along for Lebo. Tries to throw it out front for Devan. The Marlies only in their zone. Finally, they're able to knock it back out. A terrific shift by the Toronto Marlies. And if you're going to win hockey games, you wear the other team out by playing in their zone, getting their cycle game going. Excellent work by the Toronto's uh, second line in that situation. Nagy and Stavitz now with Devan. Pokes back out to Devan. Puts it into the corner, and here comes Trocek. Nagy takes the puck away from him and comes back the other way with 
stop. Got it off the heel of the stick. Have to clear the zone. And they do, but it gives the Rampage an opportunity to come back out with it. Here's McFarland getting in tight, throws it out front on the back end, hoping to get somebody snapping, but everyone there to get it right back out as Mike Duco hits the ice with Tyler Biggs, and here comes Smithson, too. Back for Roback, takes the shot, scramble out front, loose, and it's covered up by Drew McIntyre with almost nine and a half off the clock. The Marley's up. 1-0 over the San Antonio Rampage on a quick goal to start things out by Tyler Biggs. We'll be back in a moment on Marley's Hockey. Rampage trying to get back in this hockey game and the shot by the defenseman who's following up the play. But it starts with some speed to the neutral zone. Back off the defense of the Marlies. Trocek uh, makes that drop pass to Colby Rollback and he gets the shot and Drew McIntyre coming up with a save. And, uh, the, the guy at the other end in Michael Hauser has been much more busy. Shots 8-4 favoring the Toronto Marlins. Smithson for the draw. Gets dropped. He knocks it back behind him. Comes loose and he goes and gathers it in and moves it along to Mike Duco. That got just across the line. Got caught up in Duco, but he was able to move it forward. Gilroy back behind his own net. Rampage set up and break out with it. Martindale ahead. Biggs following it up. Breaks up the play. Back up through center. Chipped off of Biggs on the goaltender. Roback comes back forward again. We're halfway through this first period. Here at the Rico Coliseum. The Marlies up 1-0. Over the San Antonio Rampage. And picked up with some room to move. That shot goes off a stick and out of play with 9.48 remaining. And that'll give us an opportunity to step aside just briefly. one nothing. the Marley's up over the San Antonio Rampage with 9.48 remaining in the first. Well, the head coach of the San Antonio Rampage is Tom Rowe, and longtime American Hockey League coach, and uh, went over to Russia last season, came back this year, was sitting at home, and. Uh, when they made the coaching change with the Florida Panthers, the head coach from the from the Rampage went up to coach the NHL, so he got hired, and he's taken this team from the last place in the AHL to uh, right into the thick of things, three points out of a playoff spot coming into this one. Hard shot, a lot of traffic, back the other way. Jerry D'Amigo racing after, gets behind the deep, scores! Jerry D'Amigo! And slashed on the play, too, looks like. Well, no, he went into the boards really hard right there after that play. And I don't know, he looks like he's shaking up pretty good. But what a terrific shot. But this is the play that all starts with Spencer Abbott. We talked about him maybe not being 100%. But he gets the puck here. And a nice little flip just to lead Jerry D'Amigo along the way. And right there, D'Amigo fires it over top of the glove of the goaltender, Hauser. And then he either gets slashed in that hand uh, right there with a slash but I think more so when he crashes into the boards uh, he hits heavily in there as he loses his balance and goes into the wall and hopefully he's going to be okay but Jerry D'Amigo gets his 13th goal of the season and his third goal in the last two games uh, outstanding as he had a pair of goals on holiday Monday this past week in that 4-1 victory and now gives his club a 2-1 or 2-0 lead and you see, he gets slashed in the one hand, but he's holding his left hand, and that's the one that seemed to get hit into the boards. And you get another look at it here. The referee here the, calls it. The referee calls it almost immediately so he, when it happens. He has his arm penalty. in the air. Yeah. So we're going to get the goal, and we're also going to have a power play opportunity, I believe, well, and that's in what the situation. And that's what they're talking about. When does the penalty got get a called? Goal, we got a goaltending change also as Markson. Markstrom comes Markstrom in, Hauser goes come in. out. Hauser goes out after giving up two goals on nine shots. And yes, coming across and coming to the penalty box, I think is Petrovic, number three, with the slashing call. And now he's... And he's actually, he's, 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 he's kicking him out of the game. He's giving him a major penalty here for that slash. Wow, that's a little excessive. Well, and he may have argued it uh, 
five minute major. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's, I mean, that wasn't that bad of a slash, I didn't think. <laughs> but D'Amigo loses his balance and goes crashing in hard, and the referee. D'Amigo has been uh, solid in the last, well, since he came down from the Leafs, really. He had a couple of games where he was uh, not well, not 100%. And now here's the power play for, after all that, five-minute power play and up 2 nothing. Well, this is a golden the opportunity the off, off. No question about it, the opportunity here for the Marlies to really bury the San Antonio team. You know, with the four minutes and 15 seconds to go here on a major penalty, up 2 nothing, a chance to maybe throw a couple more on the board and really put them in a huge hole. Play along to Brennan. Marley's a little casual on the beginning of this power play. Well, and that's sometimes what happens, too. You get the 2-0 lead, and you say, oh, geez, we've got five minutes now. We can really, you know, put these guys behind the eight ball. And it's almost like you relax a little bit, and that can't be the case. As so far, San Antonio carrying the play here, being shorthanded. Abbott picks it up. Cho Cozen will chase that down back across the line. McKay leaves it back. For Tyler Biggs, cross sites looking for Stuart Percy. Picks it up at the line. Percy throws it around. Cozen and Biggs. Cozen steps out the backside, comes back up high. Holzer lets one go. Off a man. Holzer will try another one. Scores! No, waved off. Oh, that was in. I think it came in and out. That one looked like it bulged the twine. It did look like it, but maybe it hit the iron, but the referee seemed to be in pretty good position. But from our angle, tough to tell, but I'm sure we're going to ask to take a look at it. Here's Nagy. Working with Cozen, goes off his skate, picked up by the Rampage, and fired along back across the blue line into the Toronto zone. Lining it up, hard shot, and McIntyre, the wow. bad save. Well, that's a big shot right there, but a better save. No question about it is, you know, San Antonio comes right back the other way. Blocked shot right there. Cole Holzer gets the rebound and the second one. And I, you know, I, from that angle, you can't really tell because you lose sight of the puck. But uh, Holzer gets the first attempt block. And the second one, as the referee's in position, says that it hit the goal post. Steve Spott is now asking the official, did that puck go in or not? Is It didn't. Take a look. Right off the crossbar. Crossbar and out, and the official says that to see spot, so he feels like he didn't need to look at it because he was sure that it did not cross the line, but San Antonio had a huge opportunity themselves coming back the other way as the, uh, the captain of this hockey club, Robat, or, uh, Drew Shore with a real excellent chance. Lebo, cross ice, finding Brennan. Throws it through the middle to Lebo. Goes off a body and then is cleared out by the Rampage. Brennan moves back. Marley's up 2-0. Here's Abbott with it. Patient. Then off the stick to McKay, who brings it across the blue line into the Rampage zone. Fired up along the middle boards. Here's Lebo with it. Hangs on. Moves it back to McKay. He goes cross ice sharply to Brennan. He picks it up. Tried to leave it back at the line. Nobody home as McKay has to travel back outside the zone for it. Lebo, cross ice, finding Spencer Abbott. He hangs on. Draws him in, cross ice. McKay didn't get it where he needed it. And it's fired back along for Spencer Abbott again. He looks in for Lebo, who was looking for that in tight one time, but he fanned off. Well, that's the, that's the play they want right there, is Lebo gets to that position in the high slot area, and he's set for that one timer, but he just doesn't get all of it. Stuart Percy brings it across. Tried to put it back to Cozen. Cross ice, finding Holzer at the line. They'll play a little pitch and catch, and Cozen finding Holzer up high again. Cozen draws it in, takes the shot, it goes off the stick and into the corner. Percy moves it back up. Holzer's right there to pick it up. Tries to hammer one in, broke a stick in the process, and now down, yeah, goes, against the down goes Markstrom. We got a penalty here. It's going to be goaltender interference, I would imagine. And yep. Brandon Cozen is going to the 
penalty box with 5.37 remaining. The folks that were down there taking a look at it certainly don't appreciate it. Yeah, one minute and two seconds uh, left on that major penalty, and Kozen interferes with Markstrom as he goes down. And it, the funny thing is that Markstrom, 6'5", Kozen, about 5'7". And uh, look who's laying on the ice. So he sells it good, which, hey, when you're killing off a five-minute major and somebody bumps into you, you're going to get the opportunity to get that call against you. And Markston gets tied up. And I think it's the knob of his stick goes right inside the sweater of Kozen, and he gets tied up and he goes down. So four-on-four four action for just under a minute. Chop back out, racing after it. Domingo trying to get away. Jerry Domingo hangs on, patient with it, comes out of the corner, cuts to the net, out front looking for Smithson. Gets by again. Smithson will have to chase it. Pushed back behind the net for Gilroy. Four on four. Smithson comes off. On comes Greg McKay. Racine moves it along to Trocek, and he's dumped it into the bench of the Marlies, and hence the whistle with 5.04 remaining. Well, Greg McKay obviously playing some good hockey here as the Marlies four on four action for another 29 seconds. 2-0 the score. The Marlies up over the San Antonio Rampage with 5.04 remaining here at the Rico. Well, head coach Steve Spot looking on as his club's about to finish up a four-on-four -four action, but we're going to go back to that second goal for the Toronto Marlies. Good positioning in front of the net and a nice little soft lead pass by Spencer Abbott and off to the races is Domingo as he gets chopped down by Petrovic who ends up with a five-minute major after Domingo deposits his 14th goal of the season to give the Marlies a 2-0 lead and that's where we stand. Good chase after the draw from the Marley. Back along the near boards it comes. Butler trying to get loose. He's been dangerous against this Marley club, especially in San Antonio. Back up along for Whitney. Rolls back. Smithson goes after it. Granberg steps behind. A little poke at it by Smithson. Trying to shake it loose from behind the net. It does come. The Stuart Percy hangs on. Dumps it down the ice as Brandon Cozen will ride out. That smart play by Percy. And that's what I like about Stuart Percy. He has the sense of mind knowing that the four on four is going to end. He looks up at the clock to make sure that it expires. Just a good heads up play by the youngster. Mike Duco defending with McWilliam, Holzer, and Tyler Biggs. And now Duco defends at the length of the ice with 30 seconds left to go in the extra man for. San Antonio. Four minutes on the clock left here in the first period. The Marley's up to nothing. At the line, kept in by Gilroy. He's got Whitney back up high. Sends it all the way across to Trocek. Looks at Whitney. He didn't have it. Gets some pressure from Lebo. And now Trocek steps toward the net. Doesn't have anything there. No route to take the shot. Sends it back into the corner. Cross ice. Whitney. Gilroy winds up. Hard shot. And that is stopped. Back the other way, Ross with Cozen, who steps out of the box. Brad Ross back for Brennan. Cozen trying to go up high, and he stopped. And he screams one back out to T.J. Brennan, but it just handcuffed him, and back down the ice it comes. And all the Marlies come ever so close to get that third goal here after they kill off the penalty to Cozen. Zeke Cozen comes back on the ice and almost deposits that third goal. He wanted to get his feet moving. Martindale throws one at McIntyre. Stops it on the back side. Gramberg stops a clean goal. Well, Rollo all by himself in front, and they just lifted the stick, prevent him from tapping it in the empty net. And the faceoff will come off a stick of San Antonio's, and the faceoff will be outside the Marley's blue line. But Stu Percy here in his second season, I think, has done a terrific job as Greg Zanon. You know, here's the guy, the old veteran. Yeah. He's been through the wars. Nine, 498 games in the National Hockey League. This year, he signed a, a contract to play here in San Antonio. Game number two, he tears his Achilles. He's come back, and here's game number two in his return. So fourth game of the season. And uh, the old guy trying to come back from an injury. That's a tough one, tough road to hold. That one pops back out into center. Nagy goes after it. Stavitz has a look at Racine for a brief moment. We'll see how that develops out. Devan got by him. They'll pick it up and bring it all the way back with 2.34 remaining here at the Rico Coliseum in the first period. Well, Jamie Devan, who's 
you know, lets that puck get by him there. And I think that's one of those plays where you got to try and do what you can to get your stick on the puck to negate that icing call. But, you know, he's continuing the work in progress. He's such a big man. And I tell you, it's uh, one of those things, two goals on the season. I'd like to see a little more offense out of him, no doubt. Block is saved by McIntyre. Gilroy looks at it again, throws, lifts one toward the net on the redirect. It's knocked down. Corey Nagy trying to move that back out, and it finally does come to T.J. Brennan, moving it along to the van. Across the blue line, he comes. Leads it back for Stavitz and Brennan. It goes off a couple of sticks, and Greg McKegg was stepping back onto the ice. Marshall plays it in. Less than two minutes here in the first. Marley's with a quick goal right off the hop by Tyler Biggs and then Jerry D'Amigo on a breakaway. 2-0 the score. Dumped all the way down the ice. McWilliam goes back for it, but they're going to take this the length of the ice and drop it in San Antonio's territory. Well, an interesting call here by, you know, San Antonio. They have a, you know, you have a play where it's a, a controlled breakout in your own zone. And they make a poor pass and then they ice the puck. And, you know, under two minutes to go in a controlled breakout situation. Simple pass, you should be able to get out of your zone and just it seemed like they're playing a little rattle. This is a club that, you know, has points in 16 of 17 games, 12 consecutive games with at least a point. No regulation losses since back in January the 18th. So this is a club that should be playing with all kinds of confidence, but seemed to get rattled in that goal 10 seconds in and haven't really recovered. It is perfect meaning of the term make hay while the sun shines and uh, put the hay in the barn early <laughs> and san antonio has not done that they have struggled to do that really well you're right we talked about how well they've played six consecutive games uh, you know points in 16 of 17 but yet they're in 10th place in the conference only the top eight make the playoffs so they're still on the outside looking in as well as they've done on the doorstep, jamming away at it, Whitney, but McIntyre is better than that with less than a minute to play in the first. Well, the Toronto Marlies, when they get to the bench, I don't think Coach Spot's going to like their positioning on this play, and the puck ends up down in the corner, and it's thrown to the net all by himself. The defenseman, Ryan Whitney, out in front of Drew McIntyre, he can't quite get a hold of that puck as from the corner, number 16 throws it out front, Bobby Butler, and McIntyre gets a piece of it, then Whitney tries to dish off the draw, comes back. Gilroy winds up, side of the net. Evil lifts it back out into center. Tapped down by Smithson. He'll chase after it. Throws a stick at it. Let's Racine know he's there. And now here come the Rampage, trying to break out of their own end. That gets by everybody. Going to be picked up for icing as Stu Percy, the first one back to get after it, with 38.3 seconds left. Well, we talked about Stuart Percy, how heady he is, and you know how sharp he's played all season long. And you know what? I, I like the fact that you know you look at a kid. He's a first-round pick. You know, 25th overall back in 2011. His first, you know, here as a professional, 13 points. You know, I really think that he's, you know, work in progress. But I like the thing you can. He's got what you can't teach, and that's the smarts and the heads up and the coolness when he gets the puck. You know, he doesn't panic. You know, I go back to my playing days in pressure situations, you get panic and, you know, good thing they didn't have where you shoot over the glass and you get the two-minute penalty. They didn't have that when I played, Todd. It's a good thing because I would have added a lot to my penalty totals, let me tell you. And Stu Percy's so calm and cool. You know, if he continues to get better as a skater and gets more strength in his game, you know, he's a guy I can see being a pretty good NHL player. McKeg tries to take the net and it's broken up by Greg Zanon and down the ice it goes again. It is a tired group of bodies out there, perhaps, at the end of this first period by the San Antonio Rampage, trying to clear this one out and make it the easy way. 22 seconds left to play. Here in the first. Tough to be out on the road. The Marlies had some huge success on the road. And this rodeo road trip has always been good to the San Antonio Rampage. They have uh, compiled 18 wins, six losses, one and one after that over the course of having to take this trip, so it's been pretty solid for them over the years to pick up some wins, but the problem has been they have, not, they have not won early. No, and that's true, and you know, you talk about it with the Marlies where they have that long road trip early in the season, 
and uh, early in January every year because of the boat show. And uh, they've made well where they're, you know, five games above 500 on the road. But they kick things off here. Game number six of a homestand of 10 straight games. You know, three and two on that first five coming in. They kick it off with a goal 10, sec 10 seconds in. Jerry Domingo adds to the total, and they head to the dressing room after 20 minutes of play with a 2-0 lead. Tyler Biggs, Jerry D'Amigo, the goal scorers, 2-0 here after one. Welcome back to the Rico Coliseum. Jerry D'Amigo in good spirits after taking a slash in the first period, but also scoring a goal. Well, funny thing is, uh, both goal scorers here, Tyler Biggs gets it going 10 seconds in, and then at 10-24, Jerry D'Amigo. And both of them, I'm sure, took a good ribbing today before the hockey game as they're both American-born players. And uh, I'm sure the Canadian guys uh, giving them the gears after them falling 5-0 in the bronze medal game uh, today against the Finns. Uh, but Jerry D'Amigo, Tyler Biggs, two big goals for the Marlies as we get set for puck drop in period number two with the Marlies up by a pair. Biggs did say when he came in, he said, you know, I started out today thinking I'd rather have no medal than the bronze medal, but I think he, he said, I think I'd I rather think have the lying. bronze medal. Yeah. <laughs> right Any away. medal is better than no medal. You bet. Here's Bit, uh, Abbott working out of the corner, getting some pressure here from the rampage as he tries to move it back at the boards and pops loose, but it's kept in by Greg McKaggy. Takes a couple of jabs at it. Domingo still pressuring. Abbott backs off just a little bit, and Gilroy picks it up in the corner and looks ahead for Rollo. Cross ice. Gets it back into the Toronto zone for about a half a second as Jerry Domingo picks it up back in center after Greg McKaggy knocked it loose. Domingo. Spins to get room. Goes cross ice, finding Percy. Moves it down the wall. Abbott. Percy goes off. Domingo goes off. Mike Duco comes on, and so does Corbinian Holzer. Back up through the middle. It doesn't get far again as Holzer picks it up and moves it right back. The Marlies looking to pick up right where they left off at the end of 20 minutes of play. Same intensity. Rollo moves it quickly. Back across the line, Smith is trying to defend a couple of locks out of the McIntyre comes up with two big saves. Well, San Antonio showing a little bit of speed through the neutral zone, and it starts with Brampton native Jared Gomes comes through the neutral zone, a little curl and drag, and then he puts the puck on goal, forces McIntyre to make the save. He doesn't control the rebound, and right out to Jed Ortmeyer, and Ortmeyer tries to go between the legs and can't quite squeeze it through, but again, San Antonio doing a good job. Puck around the wall in their own zone, hit the man coming with some speed, go to the net, get the rebound, and Ortmeyer gets stopped by McIntyre as he comes up with two saves to keep this a 2-0 lead for Toronto. Gomes gave McIntyre a bit of a whack on the mask. And they get in on Drew McIntyre again as he has his head twisted around by the stick. It's caught up in his gear. They yeah, that's one of those plays when uh, the goaltender's kind of at the mercy of the player as uh, Jared Gomes' stick gets wrapped around and caught in the mask of the goaltender, Drew McIntyre. And as a result, as they go to the net, just much like the Marlies did in the first 10 seconds of the hockey game, and the Toronto players are pushing and pushing, and what's transpired is they don't realize that Gomes' stick is caught up against or up underneath McIntyre's mass, either choking him or twisting his neck. And as a result, I'm sure McIntyre's saying, hey guys, let him go. <laughs> and uh, seems like he's gonna be okay as we get set for a face-off in the Marley zone to the right of McIntyre. Smithson goes in for the draw, and Garrett Wilson on the second attempt. But back to the boards, Duco picks it up. Tap back. Chop, throw back, takes a long shot, tipped by a Holzer that went wide. Side of the net, San Antonio buzzing about now on this shift. Comes to the line, not out. Shore plays it along behind the net, gets caught up in the official. Biggs chases. McWilliams follows it up, finds Duco, and he just plays it along. Duco takes a bump from Garrett Wilson, who's trying to get his troops rallied just a little bit with some physical play. Shore leaves that one back for Racine. He's going to have to go back after he mishandles it. Up through center, goes and cuts it off. Out to the boards. Lebo trying to get to it, too. 
And offside as the rampage were a little bit uh, miscommunicated. Well, the Marlies difficult time on this shift right from the start. They get they win the face off, but then they can't handle the puck very well. And I think that's the most important part here. Period number two, you've got the long change. So your puck management is critical. And it starts when you win face offs in your own zone. Good D to D, crisp passes. Make sure you go tape to tape to keep the flow going, get the puck on your end and head back the other way. Well, the beginning of the season, the Marlies owned the second period. It was really a key to their success. And that gap is closed a little bit, but they uh, still hold a margin of uh, on the positive side of the ledger. Played into the corner. Levo squeezes his man to the board. Comes back out in the center as Marshall gets it to Ross, who chips it back in. Markstrom. In net for the Rampage after they started out with Michael Hauser. Picked up by Cozen, back up for Marshall, cross ice. Brennan looks at it sharply to Marshall. Steps around one, takes a little wrist shot, but there's way too many bodies out front. But getting it to the net, always the message. Cozen kicks it loose. Up high, he's got Marshall again. Cross ice one time, and that one gets to the goaltender in a hurry, but does not beat Markstrom. Well, and that's the reason why, you know, we've talked numerous times during the course of the season, the, the, the ability to one-time the puck by T.J. Brennan. And he's got 20 goals on the season, which leads all defensemen in the American Hockey League, sits fifth in the league in scoring. And right there, that's an ability. To be able to one-time pucks, that was a that was an 80-foot pass across the ice. And he one-times it. And it had some velocity on that pass. And it's great to see. But Markstrom does a good job of tracking that puck and comes up with a good save. And we'll have the face-off in San Antonio's own to Markstrom's left. Maggie in for the draw. Gramberg flips one toward the net. It got off high and into the glass. Percy comes down and pinches in. Getting after it, Stobbitz, side of the net, swings loose, but right there are the Rampage to gobble it up. Rollo picks it up behind the net, moves it quickly. Cross ice. Looking forward is Martindale. He's squeezed off of it by Percy. Gramberg goes after it too. Nagy chips it up to the glass, comes after it again. It rolls behind the net, and Stuart Percy steps too. Trying to move it up and out. The little backhander pass, turning around. And going absolutely nowhere with it was Quentin Howden. Well, the Marlies dodged a bit of a bullet there. Stu Percy, you got to make sure on your backhand, keep the puck out of the middle of the ice. Off a stick and out of the zone. 4.02 off the clock here in the second period. The Marlies up 2-0 over the San Antonio Rampage. The goal 10 seconds in was the fastest goal for this season. Previously, it was 23 seconds in against... St. John's, if you remember that game back on January 11th. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it's nothing like scoring early in the game. You get the crowd involved, you feel good about your game, and as a result, you've got a 2 0 lead here. Uh, you know, 16 minutes to go here in period number two, but feeling comfortable with what's transpired thus far. Jerry Domingo steps away, it rolls past Greg McKay. Decision there, so Ison waved off. And Right back come the rampage. Shaw flips one toward the goaltender. Swings wide to the net, steps out front, and that one off the mark. But a good opportunity for the San Antonio rampage. Gomes, side of the net, he's been buzzing about this period. Well, this is San Antonio's fourth line, too, uh, Todd, and they got the best opportunity of the period thus far. And again, right there, another great chance. Spencer Abbott steps all the way down the ice, digging his way, and finally took the shot at the line. It's kept in by Brennan. Or can get it down into the corner. Couldn't wait any longer as Domingo and Abbott were trying to get back up on their feet. Put all the way down the ice. This will allow the Marlies to make a full change. Brennan off the boards. Domingo plays that along to Smithson, and he'll get trapped on as he was ready to step off. Well, Jared Gomes. Again, here in this hockey game, as Shaw comes in across the line, he fires the puck, it goes wide, and then Gomes going to the net. He gets a great opportunity right in front. He goes from forehand to backhand and can't quite hit the net as McIntyre gets down, and uh, Gomes trying to pick that top corner short side, and he just misses the net. Domingo, Gilroy, off of Marshall. Brennan tries to backhand it up and out. 
kept in by the rampage, and then they decide to do the job themselves as Jerry Domingo will finally get the opportunity to get off. McWilliams gets after it. Duco trying to feed it back along to Tyler Biggs. Butler picks it up and takes a shot from Andrew McWilliam, who has been starting to hallmark that for himself. He is the big hitter. Biggs back across the line, realized he kind of didn't have the handle of it, so he fires it in as he and Smithson go off. Duco still on, trying to knock it back the other way, and that one is offside with 14.01 left to go here in the second period. The Marlies up to nothing. Well, Josh Levu who had a pair of goals this past Monday at that family day game at the Air Canada Centre, and, you know, he's had an up-and-down season thus far, but uh, being a rookie here in the AHL, missed some games with uh, the flu symptoms. He's got sat out a couple of times, but 25 points in 36 games a pretty good start as a pro and uh, looking forward to him continuing his development here as the season moves along. Here comes Lebo. Nice pass cross ice. Finding holes who picks it up and throws it on the goal. It skims wide. Lebo along the near board trying to work it to Ross who steps out, gets away, but Roback is there to cover it up. McWilliam keeps it in. Ross chases. Roback takes him to the corner and then eases it back out to his board and back the other way comes Trocek through center plays it along the boards after it goes Holzer Trocek try to backhand her out the crab but it went off the net and Kozen comes back the other way got a penalty coming up tripping is going to be the call and the Marlies are going to go on the power play when we return 2-0 the score. Marley's up over San Antonio here at the Rico Coliseum on a Saturday afternoon. Well, in the penalty box for the San Antonio Rampage, former Marley, former Maple Leaf, Joey Crabb is off for two minutes or less on a tripping call and trying to break out of the zone. Brandon Cozen and Crabb reaches in and trips Cozen up. And as a result, the Marleys will go to their second power play of the hockey game, looking to see if they can stake their lead as they lead 2-0 with 13-11 to go here in period number two. The first one was a five-minute major, though it got kind of uh, Didn't short. have a lot of urgency in no. it, did it, did they, Croft? No, it short-circuited a little bit, too, because they, uh, of course, took a penalty during it. So it was about three minutes of penalties. It's cleared out right off the hop on this one. Abbott, McKay, and Lebo, along with Jerry Domingo, as T.J. Brennan plays it along. Abbott taps it back to McKay, who fires it in, looking for Lebo on the far side. He picks it off the board, sends it back to Abbott. Ian Brennan down low, back to McKay, up high. Spencer Abbott hanging on. Quickly moves it to McKay as they round it out, looking for Lebo on the side of the net. Josh Lebo. Moves it back up the boards. It gets by Abbott and all the way down the ice as Brennan goes back for it. Domingo comes off. Well, good work by the San Antonio penalty killers. As soon as the puck's on the wall, they get the force going. They're not just one guy. It's in unison. First, second, third guy, they come up with the puck and they clear it down 200 feet and relieve the pressure. Cozen, McKay. Thought he had a lane, but he gets it back to TJ. Brennan flips it toward the net. He's looking for Ross to tip it in at the side. Brad Ross. Up high, here's Brennan again, flips another one, and Cozen, who got one last week just that way from a T.J. Brennan shot, is doing the work out front. Back for McKay, shot right on, stop! Cozen takes a couple of shots, and Markstrom comes up with all those saves. Well, Markstrom has come in in relief of the starter, Michael Hauser, and he's stopped every shot thus far. This is a great chance as McKay trying to go top shelf Markstrom in the butterfly position, gets that left hand up and blocks the puck with the rebound right there for Brandon Cozen, and he gets a couple of whacks out of it, but he can't get it underneath those big pillows in that paddle of the goaltender. Shot right on, Nagy right there to try and drill it home, but Markstrom comes up with another save. Well, and this is a good save through some traffic too, and the Marlies win the faceoff right after the ensuing uh, whistle, and going to the net, plus you got traffic of the San Antonio players trying to get in the shooting lane, and Markstrom's got to fight through all that traffic and legs, and he comes up with a loose puck on a nice save, and no rebound. 
Nagy in for the draw, wins it back. Holzer. Easily to Kozen. Holzer gets it back. He looked to wind up. Wanted that wrist shot. Gets it back. Holzer winds up. Loose puck side of the net. And that uh, one rolls harmlessly wide. Here's Holzer. Moving it to Percy. They'll back off. Less than 20 seconds with the extra man. Percy with the shot. That one thundered off the board. Here's Kozen. And he was looking for Holzer who let it go, thinking Percy was on the far side. Now a bit of a tweener pass. It went between the two guys, and they both thought each other were going to get it. Kozen leaves it for Nagy, who rips one. It's stopped by Markstrom. Here's Percy again. Down into the corner, back to five on five, high on the line. Holzer backhands one into the circle. It's knocked down, but Brad Ross, with some extra effort, Gets it to Kozen, steps out, and Kozen tries another shot. Brandon Kozen has been on a tear here in the last couple of minutes. Here's Nagy again. Marshall, a shot. Now we've got a penalty coming up for the San Antonio Rampage again. Duco back up high. Smithson eases that one in. Ian Nagy switching places. Corey Nagy trying to hang on to this one. Goes cross ice. Marshall gets it off a of boot and he knocks it into the corner. Trying to poke at it. Finally, the whistle on the interference call with 10.23 remaining. The Marlies up 2 0 and going back on the power play. Yeah, the veteran Ryan Whitney is going to go to the box and he's arguing his case. But, you know, the Marlies, even though they don't score on the power play, they keep full possession of the puck and they do an excellent job of. You know, keeping it in the zone and on the long change, San Antonio can't get fresh bodies on the ice. And as a result, Whitney runs in or tries to pick one of the Marley players and he gets the interference call. So back to back power plays here for the Toronto Marlies. 18 12 shots in favor of Toronto. A 2 0 lead as they look for a real boost to get it up to 3 0 with a power play marker here. Smithson. Out for the draw. Back for Brennan. Winds up and thundered one in, but it went off the glass. Got up just a little high as TJ Brennan trying to quickly move it to Spencer Abbott. He does. Abbott escapes from one. Ortmeyer. Levo takes the shot right on. And once again, Markstrom comes up with the save. He is keeping his team in it, and they are able to clear it. I tell you, I marvel when I watch Spencer Abbott how calm and cool he is with the puck. And for a guy his size, Tremendous vision, but just the patience and the skill set he's got. It's really, it's great to watch. I don't think his pulse ever, ever makes ever a bad up. play. Oh. Here's McKay. Throws one at Markstrom. He got it right in the crest. Well, Greg McKay, you know, second season here in the American Hockey League. And, you know, number one line pretty much all season long. Uh, you know, when you get your captain... Jared Smith called up after a few games into the season and sort of he said had to assume that role and 32 points in 40 games. I'd say he's done it pretty well here, no question. Doesn't hurt when you've got a guy like Spencer Abbott on your line, though. He's really helped because they're both young players, but some guidance from goes inside of the net. Ross got a little backhanded up top. Off of him. Back at the line, it just gets crossed. It's Holzer. Comes back with it. A minute to go here as it gets by Cozen as they try to dump it in. Long pass. And Percy will have to chase this one down. Moves it back out. Brandon Cozen with some speed down the left side. It's not the blue line. Tried to feed it back into Corey Nagy, who also has a fair bit of speed in those skates. It's picked up and fired the rest of the way. 40 seconds left to go. Some changes coming up in this power play as they get some new bodies out on the ice with 30 seconds left to play in it. Less than nine minutes. Gets by Abbott. Across the blue line. Hangs on. Spencer Abbott takes the shot looking for it to Migo and not a lot of rebound there from Markstrom. Yeah, good job by Markstrom as he <laughs> watches the shifty Spencer Abbott and he comes in across the line. He does a good job of using his leg to shield off the defender's stick. And then he waits to see guys going to the net. And then he fires the puck trying to get it between the pads of the big tall goaltender in Markstrom at six foot five. But Markstrom does a good job of coming out, cutting the angle down, and not allowing a rebound. McKay squares up. There's the drop. Swept back. 
as San Antonio couldn't quite get it out. It goes off a couple of bodies. Back Anders Amigo, loose puck out front. Amigo still after it, and it's cleared away by Markstrom. He didn't get it very far. And back up the boards they go and down the ice. And they will kill off that penalty as well, but not before a tense moment for Jacob Markstrom. He stood the test. Brennan back across the blue line, takes the shot, pops up and nearly back over the net. Brennan moves it back. Abbott off the boards. Side of the net. McCaig steps out. He was looking for that step out shot. He's looking for that. James Van Riemsdyk play, and boy, everyone around the National Hockey League seems to be trying it. Trocek steps across around Brennan and then sent it wide. McIntyre just didn't give him a lot to shoot at. And now Greg McKay cuts off that shot as Trocek very nearly made it two to one. Boy, oh boy, that kid is, looks like he's gonna be a terrific player one day, no doubt about that. 37 points, 15 goals, which is the, the most in this hockey club as he leads the team in scoring. and. You know, he's got an ability last year playing in the OHL. And Jerry D'Amigo is going to get an opportunity here as Spencer Abbott again uses that reach, the backhand shot by D'Amigo, and that left pad of Markstrom makes sure the puck doesn't get by him. And, uh, you know, again, speaking of the youngster Trocek, uh, when I look at his stats last year in Saginaw and Plymouth uh, in the OHL, 50 goals, 109 points, and being a third round pick of this. Florida Panthers organization. They've got a good one in him, and I think he's going to be a guy that is instrumental in the resurrection of that franchise when you look at the you know, the guys that they've drafted in a bark off over the last couple of years, and, and certainly uh, uh, the rookie of the year the year before in Herberto. Uh, so Florida Panthers, an organization that looks to get back on track as a timeout called by San Antonio as he's looking to try and get his club back on track here. As they trail 2-0 here over the Marlies with 37-37 to play in period number two. Well, Tom Rowe, as you mentioned, Bob, took over. Peter Horchett goes up to the Florida Panthers after Kevin Deneen let go. And then, of course, Kevin Deneen goes on to win a gold medal with the yeah. women's team. Yeah, it was great to see the other day. Uh, and you know what? He was so calm and cool and poised behind the bench there, especially late in the game. And I think it rubbed off on kept those Canadian girls calm for them to be able to pull through and get that tying goal and eventually win the gold medal. That shot pops out front, but it's picked up by McKagan. Racing away three on two with Domingo and Abbott. Trying to go cross ice, and that one got behind Jerry Domingo. He plays it down around for Abbott out front. Squirted by a couple as that crew was heading off. After a good rush, here's Holzer. Has Wilson in his sights. Domingo, and rather Duco, picking it up, and it is sent the length of the ice. And this one will come all the way back with less than seven minutes to go here in the second period. The Marlies still up 2-0 on two goals in the first period. Yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, Corbinian Holes are talking things over with his partner here and seeing what they want to do off the faceoff after the Marlies guilty of icing that puck. And Jared Smithson comes in on the faceoff and obviously a play is to win the draw and then a little D to D and out of the zone. Holzer picks it up, moves it. Andrew McWilliam, easy one to do so. Comes back up and out. Biggs trying to put a stick on it. Smithson chops at it. And they got it inside the San Antonio zone, but not for long. And Smithson will get after it again, breaking up the play. McWilliam. He, Holzer, Duco, Smithson, and Biggs singled out as putting together some terrific efforts against that Texas team that featured four of the Top 10 scorers in the league. That was on family day at the ACC. Here's Duco with it again. Just allowing one goal against the Texas Stars. The top scoring team in the American League is a big hit by Greg Zanin. And it looks like Tyler Biggs shaking up on the play as I believe he made a hit his head against the glass on that body check. He is slow to get to the bench. All the way over and Luke LeBlanc will have a look at Tyler Biggs. He is uh, struggling mightily. Oh, he's cut too. He's, I think his own visor probably catches him across the bridge of the nose and you know that's one of those plays where unfortunately 
You know, you're going for the puck to keep it in and you reach. And the veteran Zanin is going to get there at the same time. And he's going to come in from the backside. And, you know, that's where uh, Tyler Biggs is going to try and turn and go back the other way. And, yeah, his face right up against the glass. And could have very easily been a penalty called on that play right there. But, uh, unfortunately, the youngster looks like he's shaken up pretty good. Cross ice, Percy, there used to be all sorts of injuries you could recognize. You could say to that, oh, he must play hockey. And add to that the cut on the bridge of the nose from the visor. Ah, uh, no doubt about that. That's why I never wore one. <laughs> Was that why? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to work it out of the corner, rampage. Throw check, gets to it. McIntyre takes a sweep at it with the paddle. Trying to get it to Ortmeier, who's diving in off the bench. Devan comes off. Good! Comes back across the line. Ortmeier throws it toward the net, but it's shy of that mark. And now Stuart Percy tries to work it back out. It's the San Antonio Rampage and the Toronto Marlies starting to get a little bit more physical. Gilroy winds up, lets one go, and hit his own man. Krocek turns around and lets one fly and does the same thing. And here's Maggie, the longest stop. It's tipped by Ross. He'll chase it down. And that's still going to be an icing call as Brad Ross doesn't get to the red line. He's arguing the call that he touched the puck. He did, but his stick about five, piece, or five feet behind the uh, red line. So an icing call as you look at Tyler Biggs is going to head to the dressing room as... And maybe go off to the quiet areas. We'll get another look at it. He knows that Zanin's coming in on him. And boy, oh boy, like he really kisses the glass big time. And the, the shield of his own helmet uh, not only, you know, cuts the bridge of his nose, but certainly doesn't help the impact with his face against the glass. Because he looks like he may uh, have sustained a little bit of a... Yeah, he's, he's walking under his own power. Ringer there. He, he got off under his own power, and he, he walked down the tunnel under his own power. So, you know, it's just really probably the cut that they're looking at. Lebo. Ross tries to play that one. It gets by Gilroy. Lebo touches it. Nice move to get around Ortmeier. Steps across the blue line. Rolls it on Markstrom, and Cozen was right there in case he mishandled it. He did not. 4.06 remaining here in the second period. The Marlies up 2-0 here on Rogers. Well, Josh Levo, a slick player, and a nice little spin around move right there. He gets by the veteran Ortmeier as they try to send the pass across to Kozen, and he just loses the handle, but the youngster again, 25 points in 36 games, Josh Levo, 12 goals on the season, and I really like what I've seen from this youngster. He's got some terrific moves there's no doubt about back-to-back 73-point -back seasons his last two years in the Ontario Hockey League looking good as a pro in his first year Rollo gets the pass throws it out front and a great opportunity for Martindale and another one coming from Rollo as the Marlies trying to hold hey, off hey, the San Antonio hey. Rampage late in the second period clear by Marshall to the board not out but gets by Levo too Shot, hits another Rampage player. Cozen, this time lifts it out. It'll bounce by everybody as Ross tries to get off, and he does. But didn't get deep enough. Long one, Rollo gets by everybody. Marshall comes off the, the net. That was a scary moment, I think, for Drew McIntyre. Yeah, that's one of those plays where it comes off the board somewhere and squirts out, hits the side of the net. But Zanin looking for the long bomb pass, and he lets it get away from himself and you see the puck coming back McWilliam there in due time no question about it but guilty of icing is San Antonio 321 to play here in a 2-0 lead for Toronto McKeg in the circle with Domingo and Abbott Abbott comes away with it hangs on works down the wall now steps off of it takes the shot and that went off a stick and out of play. Well, San Antonio will get their change now as they were stuck out there with some tired bodies. But again, you know, every time that the puck gets on the stick of Spencer Abbott, you know, he backs people off, he makes people move, and uh, I tell you, he's a dangerous guy. And I love the way he's 
really shown here in his second full season in the American League that he can be a top performer in this, in this league, no question about it. Andrew McWilliam with the shot. Craig McKay keeps it in. It rolls in on Marks and he just plays it along. And up through center doesn't get very far as Provinian Holzer got it off the boot. He goes back. Trying to move it out of the corner. Greg McKay. Long to Domingo. He and Wilson exchange. Wilson tried to take it back the other way. But McKay races down the right side. He's got Domingo going to that back. Andrew Markstrom with the save. And another one from Spencer Abbott. Wow, what a terrific save this is by Jacob Markstrom off Jerry Domingo. And we'll get an opportunity to see it when we come back. More Marley's action at the Rico Coliseum. Well, the Toronto Marlies transition game starts with speed. Greg McKaig, a good defensive effort, and then he's off to the races. He spots Jerry Domingo going wide, streaking to the net. He gets the puck to him. Domingo trying to get the backhand, forehand to backhand, and across over top of Markstrom's pad. But the goaltender steps up and makes a big save to keep this a two-goal game and keep the rampage in the hockey game. He has really been all the difference in stepping into this hockey game. Hasn't allowed a goal, no question. And has been peppered at times with some good quality scoring opportunities from the Marlins. Kocek moves that one along. He and Whitney he sends it at the side of the net. And the Rampage are able to finally get it right back up and through center. Josh Lugo trying to throw a stick on Vincent Trochek. Pops by Joey Crab and down into the corner. Stuart Percy. It shakes loose as Greg McKay picks it up. Domingo nearly got filled in, but he had a quick eye to that. And Whitney again. Crossed the line, but given up. Domingo looking for some help. Finds Cozen, who's in alone. And now gets help as Domingo goes to the net. And Cozen plays it around. McKay. Works it back up high and then... Tries to find Domingo back behind the net. Kraft gives him a little bit of a shot. Cozen comes after it. Domingo throws a stick on it. And that gives Marshall to it. Back out. Nagy has to come back for it. Knocked off a couple of sticks. Kraft trying to get around Corey Nagy who throws at it. But now he's got a penalty coming up. Corey Nagy is going to go to the box. Holding is going to be the call with a minute one left to play here in the second period. Well, Corey Nagy is the forward having to fill in for the defenseman, and he comes back, and uh, actually they're giving the penalty. No, it's not Brennan who's getting the, Brennan's thinking he's getting a penalty against him. Uh, at the end of the play, he knocks the man down. It's actually Nagy that gets the original penalty, and uh, he's telling him, the referee's saying, you're not getting the penalty. He could have called one on Brennan, and Brennan knows he was guilty of it there, but only one call made on the play, and it's Nagy who gets the penalty with 101 to play and an opportunity for San Antonio to maybe cash in and get right back into this hockey game, no doubt about it. DJ Brennan giving himself a penalty. <laughs> you can't do that in this game, much as you'd like to, I'm sure. Here are the Rampage on the power play. They've been really putting together some good offensive moments. And Domingo picks it up and lifts it the length of the ice. We'll see what they can do with the extra man. They could look good in a couple of moments where they've had some chances, but very few shots, only 12 in the hockey game. Wilson backs off. Trying to work this out of the corner. McWilliam comes in to kick it around. Back up to the line. Gilroy up no, goes off the stick of Brandon Cozen. He clears the zone. Short. Sure. Doesn't get to it, and it is cleared once again, this time by Andrew McWilliam all the way down the ice, and in fact gives the Marlies a chance to change with a little over 10 seconds to go in the period. Here comes Shaw. Off the board, Smithson comes loose to Gilroy and bounces past him, and Smithson gets right on top of him, and time runs out on the San Antonio Rampage after 40 minutes says that uh, they don't get a shot off on the first half of their power play. Well, you're right. A minute and one to go, and they don't even get an opportunity. So, you know, good props, I guess, for the Toronto Marlies penalty killers. Again, forcing the issue and not allowing San Antonio time and space to get their power play working. So, mission accomplished. You 
scoreless in the second period of play. You have a 2-0 lead on home ice after 40. Should be able to bring it home. 2-0 the score. The two first period goals are the ones that stand up here at the Rico Coliseum. Join us for the intermission. This copyrighted broadcast is presented under the authority of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Limited. All rights to this broadcast are reserved, and any rebroadcast, recording, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Limited is expressly prohibited. Very Welcome good, back to Ty. Go Very good. Yeah, <laughs> I memorized that in my head. It just comes to me. Sometimes I just say it when I'm walking down the street. These groceries are prohibited unless otherwise authorized. Well, the Toronto Marlies getting set for period number three, a two-goal lead. Uh, have 59 seconds in which to kill off as uh, San Antonio has their third power play of the hockey game. But the Marlies, 20-0-1-1 when they lead after, after 40 minutes of play. Uh, so chances are pretty good that uh, they feel pretty comfortable coming into this one. They've got 20 minutes to work. They certainly have a nose for it. They have fought back from deficits. They have been in the lead and have held on clearly. They are a team that feels confident that they are always in a position to pick up at least a point, and more often than not, two. Well, the fifth best defensive club in the American Hockey League, that's a good reason why they sit first place in their division and have that impeccable record in Whitney. third periods. Shot there by Whitney. It gets by Domingo and it gets by Gilroy. Smithson battles to it as the Marley's still killing off a penalty from the second period. 35 seconds left to go in that one. Corey Nagy was tapped as much as T.J. Brennan thought he was getting two. He did not. Lebo picks it up. Turns around and flips it down the ice. Smart play by Josh Lebo. Well, and you know, we talk about, you know, Special teams, when you look at it, you want to be in the top third in your special teams, and you'll be in good shape. The Marlies, eighth best power play, tenth best penalty killing. And a big reason is goaltending right there of Drew McIntyre as he stops McFarland on that nifty play by him. Dobbitz comes on, knocked down, and McIntyre on a one that looked like it was going to be a bouncer, but he got to it before it did, and he stops that one. He has not received. A whole heck of a lot of work, has he, Bob? No, you're right about that, but McFarland shows some good speed. The right shot on the left side, he cuts down to the goal line and then comes back on his forehand. That left pad of McIntyre, an excellent job of closing the bottom of the net and not allowing McFarland to get the San Antonio Rampage on the board. Only two shots in the second period. That can sometimes even be a little frustrating for a goaltender not to see action. Brennan. Got it to Abbott. Looked like he was almost offside on that play, but uh, Spencer Abbott got it up around the shoulder. Trying to work it back out of their own end. The rampage. Marshall takes the man. Brennan comes in, moves it back along to Abbott. He's got McKay heading down the ice. And just beyond Greg McKay. Gets a little chop there before he got to the net. Spencer Abbott comes in. He's taken to the ice, and the Rampage will to lift it back up and out. Across to Brennan. He it down into the corner. He'll go off. Holzer's on. On comes McWilliam. Out moves it back out. And here comes the Rampage into the Toronto zone. Hanging up, waiting for help was Rollo. Goes off a stick of Holzer and back out into center. He plays it along and chasing it goes Tyler Biggs. He had the first goal of this contest, and 10 seconds in, here's Smithson playing it along to Biggs. Well, good to see Biggs back after getting that shot where he hit his face in the glass and cut the bridge of his nose. He's right back out here, starting period number three, almost eats the glass again. They shove him around pretty good. He's a big body to try and move, though. McIntyre plays it off into the corner, up along the near boards. Rallo tried to... Damn it back out, but Lebo got in the way, and now Shore steals it from him. And across the blue line it comes, back into the Toronto zone. With some intent, Percy. Lebo knocked down, has a look up, no call. 
three minutes in here to the third period. Rampage trying to get something sustained as far as the offense is concerned, and Ortmeier has it taken away by Ross and put back out into center ice. No, no, no! Reaching for it, Ross again. He looks up front. Rampage retreat with it. Some changes being made on both sides of the ice. Whitney just keeps it along to get it across the line, but again, not for long. Whitney was going off, and he was forced to play that before he got there, and now he steps over the boards. Here's Racine, way back in his own end for the Rampage. Down 2-0. Marley's with 27 shots no, 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 no. on the combination of Hauser and Markstrom. Hauser was pulled after the second goal. That pops by as Corey Nagy goes racing after it. Trying to get there first. Goes off his skate, still pursuing it. Nagy. He's finally taken to the ice. He gets right back up, trying to get after it. These two teams got into a bit of a physical contest the last time they played. It looked like it was heading out of the rink, but just dropped inside. Offside is the call. I think we're going to get an icing call icing as we call, look at right. uh, Tyler Biggs. And looks like he's got a couple of stitches to close up the gash across the bridge of his nose. And his first shift here in period number three looked like he banged into the glass. And <laughs> some discomfort, no question. And here early in period number three, he goes to the boards. And right there, his face up against the glass again. And he looks none too comfortable as he heads to the bench and point to his nose when he gets to the bench uh, for... The uh, athletic trainer, Luke LeBlanc, to come and pat it down a little bit as there's some blood running from it again. But uh, as any true hockey player, he's right back out there working at it again and uh, not going to be deterred by a couple of stitches. He's starting to work on a little bit of a move there that uh, some of the bigger players that have the ability do. They get their butt out and the stick way out, and there's no way you can get to the puck because yeah. they got it way dangling on the edge of their stick. And Tyler Biggs is starting to show that he's got that particular well, stick in his bag. using his big body to his advantage, and that's something that, you know, he's got to learn. And you know what it's, it is? It's a process. And uh, he's always been a, a like a bigger kid and a goal scorer through his minor hockey days in his junior last year at junior. What, he had 26 goals in the Ontario Hockey League in Oshawa? But uh, you get up to the next level, and boy, oh, boy, it's tough to find that room and be able to make those plays. So you got to reinvent yourself a little bit. He's had some difficulties, but he's starting to really catch on to a new role. Drew McIntyre makes the save. His third one of the period. Rollback. Cross site. Butler turns on one, and it skims through, but no rampage there to find the open net. Biggs chasing it down. Reels it in. Tries to go upstairs and send it up top. Over the net. Well, boy, we just talked about him trying to finish off plays, and when you get an opportunity like that, you'd like to see him cash in. After it, Marshall. Marley's doing a pretty good job of spreading it out. Ross leads it back for Levo. Back for Brennan. Shot. Loose. Comes back up high. Marshall steps back in and on the goaltender. But Markstrom is there again. Well, the Marlies do a great job here of using everybody on the rush. And you come in and you gain the blue line, and it starts with Ross, a little drop pass. Then Levo picks it up, and he sees Brennan coming in, and then go to the net, because T.J. Brennan, he loves to shoot the puck, and that's what he's going to do. A little bit earlier, Tyler Biggs trying to chase down that Jared Smithson puck. He's trying to go short side shelf. He fans on it a little bit, and he fires it wide. But the Marlies on the doorstep here, ringing the doorbell, seeing if they can crash it and cash in on another goal up their lead. Pops up high. Stavitz looks for it. That one was elbowed along and they're going to bring it back outside I think. Well Brad Stavitz saying hey I used my elbow I didn't use my glove but <laughs> same situation as the referee says. Doesn't work in uh, the beautiful game doesn't work in the tough game here either. 2-0 the score. Well, the Toronto Marlies will be back at home next Saturday, March 1st, 3 p.m., as they host the QEW rivals, the Hamilton Bulldogs, and it'll be here on Rogers TV. The Bulldogs, one of those teams that uh, play the Marlies tough. You can't help it uh, from Hamilton as well. Spencer Abbott presents a tough test for those Bulldogs, too. Yeah, Hamilton's struggling right now, 2-7-1 in their last 10 as they've dropped to 
second last in the Western Conference in the American Hockey League here. And I tell you, it's, uh, it's so encouraging the first part of the season for that hockey club. And I know Michael Anlauer, the, the owner of that Hamilton franchise, probably not too pleased with what's sort of transpired here, but they've fallen off the pace. Maggie, long shot, turned away by Markstrom. After it again. Kevin Marshall reels it in. And then he sends that one straight into the crowd, a couple of rows back. I like Nagy. I mean, for me, this kid, yeah. he's really, you know, he's been up and down a couple of times to the ECHL, uh, but he comes and he brings an element, you know, of that speed factor. And I think that, you know, today in the last couple of games, second power play unit, he's getting some time there too. And uh, I think that he's he'd been a real good addition to this hockey club. And, and you look at what's happened with some of the injuries and different uh, situations through the course of the year. He's been a bright light that's sort of taken the opportunity that he's given and make, has made the most of it. Bramberg trying to throw in. Corey Nagy just comes in. He's always got the good attitude, always does exactly what they tell him to do. No questions asked. Just, hey, we want you to do this today, Corey. Okay, I'm doing it. Yeah, coach's dream, isn't it? <laughs> I would think so. Here's Domingo. Abbott trying to get by. Slowed up just enough for Racine to get there and move it back out for Ortmeyer. Here come the rampage. Less than 13 minutes to play. Trocek takes the shot, and McIntyre comes up with another save. Well, as you say, just the 16th shot on goal, but some tough saves for Drew McIntyre, and it's all about focus. You know, you don't get a lot of work. As you said, only two shots in period number two. Uh, they've come back and had some good chances here out the gate here in the first seven, eight minutes of period number three, and he's been very sharp. Butler lets one fly. Didn't get a lot on it, though, and Smithson tries to backhand it up and back out. It lands flat at the line. Smithson throws a stick at it again. Now Whitney looks in, looking for the redirect, and went wide of the net, though so McIntyre gave it some encouragement. Here's Biggs. Hangs on, tried to find Levo on the backhanded Nola. There's a shot off of McIntyre, rebound still there, and behind the net it rolls with Andrew McWilliam. Yeah, bad turnover in the neutral zone, and you end up with a golden opportunity going right back the other way. And in San Antonio, as we've talked about, a 2-0 lead in the you know in period number one. A couple of different opportunities in this game to get that third goal. You've allowed San Antonio to hang around. You turn it over in the neutral zone, and you get that opportunity right there on a nice shot by Drew Shore. McIntyre comes up with the save as San Antonio crashed in the net, looking for a rebound to get on the board and get right back into the thick of this hockey game. Well, we already know from the past couple of days that uh, a two-goal lead is not safe, even when you get to around the three-minute mark. Ah, very nice, very nice. All the way down the ice it goes again. They'll bring it back, and those bodies will have to get things organized up. Yeah, and you, you look at, uh, we spoke of, you know, the Florida Panther connection with Kevin Deneen, uh, you know, the head coach of the Canadian women's hockey team, uh, brother Gord on the Marley's bench, and I asked Gord uh, before the game if he had spoken to Kevin. He said, no, we've We've uh, contacted each other through email and uh, pretty proud, no question, of uh, the achievement of you know, his brother coming in in a tough situation to go into that Canadian women's team uh, at a very critical time of the year and take it over and come away with the gold medal. Outstanding work. There'll be a couple of stories I'm sure shared up in the lake in the Adirondacks over at the Deneen compound. Here's yeah. Rosen. Throws one and a glove saved by Markstrom. You know, it's interesting, you know, Markstrom has come in and, you know, he had 17 saves on 17 shots coming in after uh, two periods of play. And here in period number three, uh, five shots for the Marlies. So, you know, 22 saves for the youngster. And, you know, he's sort of been anointed of, you know, he's going to be the next guy in the Florida organization. But he hasn't exactly turned the American Hockey League on its ear. As you know, when you look at his record coming in, just 11 and 10 on the season. So uh, I got to see more from him. He's a big, big kid, but uh, hasn't really proven that he can be that next guy as we're going to get a power play opportunity as a high sticking call against Jamie Devan for the Marlies as he takes out the youngster Vincent Trocek and uh, the Marlies. Now, if you want to be fair Devan, to Jamie Devan, he's a little bit bigger. His isn't he? high stick is maybe not exactly. 
a high stick to other people. Yeah, and actually, it's going to be Nagy, not to... Uh, not, oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Devan, who clips him right there on the stick. and That's a high you know, stick anybody's uh, He's standards. taking Nagy to the bench, and actually, he's not. He is getting... He is getting number 24, Jamie Devan, as the referee makes the right call. And Devan looking around like, who, me? I didn't understand that, but he did clip him in a good call by the official. So the fourth power play opportunity for San Antonio in the hockey game, 10.58 to play. They trail 2-0. So if they want to get back in this one, this is as good as time as any. Right on McIntyre, and it comes loose again. Lining up Gilroy, side of the net, and misfiring Butler. Cleared out by Jared Smithson. That's a well, he's dodged a bit of a bullet there because McIntyre had no idea where the puck was when it was at the point because he sees it at the last second. And if San Antonio could get it on the goal there on that sort of shot pass, it uh, looked like they had a great opportunity to get on the board. One pops and falls, and they say it uh, went out of the rink and back in. Yeah, faceoff should come outside the the Toronto Marlies line and a little bit earlier off the faceoff. McIntyre right there thinks he's got the puck and now he's looking around. Where is it? It's at the point and then it comes across. He did see that puck coming across so he would have been there in time. Now that you see on the replay but a misfire by I believe it was Drew Shore or McFarlane at the side of the net trying to one time it past the goaltender. Biggs takes the draw. The four man situation with Domingo, Gramberg, and Marshall. All the way down into the Toronto zone. McIntyre plays it along. Marshall gets to it and clears it. Kevin Marshall has become a solid penalty killer as well for Steve Spot. Yeah, one of the veterans on the blue line, no question about it. He's really stepped up and, uh, you know, key contributor to this club, especially playing with Brennan for, on most nights for pretty much the whole game. In the corner, Gramberg pushing it around. Comes loose to Ross. He steps out and tried to fire it down the ice, but getting in the way with Gilroy. Now Whitney comes back. Finds his man coming across the line. McFarland. Ross is right there at the line. It's finally dragged out by Josh. Levo he smartly pulls it back to the forehand and fires it down the ice instead of trying to go down the wall. Yeah, Josh Levo so smart, no question. He shows it right there of you know realizing that there's pressure on the wall spin and get it all the way down the ice. Back up to Whitney. He goes cross ice. We get the fifth man in. Sure, lets one fly into the glass, however. Back up for Whitney. Devan back on his feet. A couple of seconds before he gets back on the ice, however. In behind the net. Whitney. That got by him. Just keeps him in at the line as he does a little extra skating to do that. Now Devan back on. Here's Butler. Devan pressures Butler and fires it into the corner. Roback is there. Devan shoots his man off. Oops, comes back up high to Whitney. He goes back down the wall, lets it go. Roback picks it up on the far side, holds her there. Domingo as well. And Domingo cuts off the pass and steps away with it. Now just eats it down inside the San Antonio zone with eight and a half minutes remaining. And the Marlies up 2-0. The two goals in the first period standing up. And the only ones in the game so far as we're seeing takes a hip check from Gramberg. Allows Percy to get to it. Now here comes Cozy. Sharp one. McKay. Off the wall. Greg McKay trying to cut to the net. Moves it back up. Percy winds up. Didn't have the shot and then tried the wrister. Or fire in the way of that one. And then he couldn't find it amongst his feet. Back up into center it comes. Here's Martindale across the line. Bramberg takes him out of it once again. Off the glass, roll back, couldn't keep that one in. And, and Bill Buckner, though, right? Yeah, I was going to say, don't want him on my baseball team. After it is Nagy. Brennan tries to play it along to the van. He gets the long stick in there, and it gets back out to Abbott from Brennan. Didn't have a lot of options. He tried to find Nagy. Nagy takes a chance to hit Roback, and uh, he's going to go to the box for that. And Jake McMahon pushes his man to the ice, Ryan Martindale. But it's going to be Colby Roback who uh, took that one hard right at the Marley bench. Yeah, this is an easy call by the official, as uh, you're right. 
you know, Corey Nagy with the, the hit from behind, his rollback takes a pretty good shot there as he gets to the bench. It looks like he's going to be okay, but uh, the penalty is no doubt in, in the mind of the official and everybody in the building when you heard that hit where Roback hit, ate the boards pretty good. So when we come back, we'll have a power play for San Antonio for Marley's Hockey when we come back at the Rico Coliseum. Well, Corey Nagy for a boarding call, two minutes or less in the box for the Marlies, and an easy call by the officials. Kobe Roback, boy, he hits the boards hard there. You know, that's a dangerous play, Todd. When you can read the guy's name and read the number when you're going in, you got to ease him into the boards. You can't give him a shot like that. And, you know, it's one of those situations where they come to the player's aid right there and cooler heads prevail, but San Antonio with a power play, trailing 2 nothing. 721 to play in period number three. Well, I think San Antonio recognized almost immediately it was going to be a penalty, and they didn't want to get into a situation. Sure. Yeah. They, needed, they need to get back in this hockey game, and it's cleared out once again. Smith's pressure. They really got caught up with the big Markstrom. Across the blue line. Smithson gets right on top of it. Doesn't allow the Rampage to enter it into the zone. They do now, they bring it in, but not for long again. And McKaig is there. Off the boards, all the way down the ice, holds it. Whitney from all the way down in his own end, moves it back to throw check, and they chip it down the boards, try it this way. Shaw getting after it. Trocek steps out front. Bramberg goes to him immediately, and Whitney gets some pressure from Tyler Biggs. Shaw plays it down into the corner, looks back. Trocek trying to step away from the board from Marshall. He lost an edge, too. Whitney plays it back. Gilroy cross ice, and they're trying that one time. But Shaw wasn't able to pull the trigger on it either. Well, how many times do I talk about Brennan with that one-time shot? It's a skill to be able to make that shot. Shaw takes one there. Oh! McIntyre turns it away. All the way up to 19 shots on goal now. After just 12 in the first two periods. San Antonio, no doubt, will hear about that from their coach. Regardless of the outcome of this game. Well, in fairness, the Marlies didn't play last night. And uh, San Antonio has been on the road the whole month here. And played last night in Rochester. Would have got here to Toronto about 3 a.m. So 3 p.m. puck drop. It's a pretty tough turnaround. And... And they got themselves in a hole in the first 10 seconds, and then they give up the second one. And since then, they've been not too bad defensively. And Markstrom's come in and kept them in the game and kept this game where they're still in it with 5.20 to go. And now five on five as Nagy heads straight to the bench. Wilson, long the near wall, picked up by Levo. He moves it back out to Spencer Abbott across the blue line. Abbott tries to cut in, and he's taken out of the play. McCabe was following it up, but it was picked up and back out for the Rampage. That shot right back the other way, and the Rampage pull it to within one as Butler comes up with another goal against the Marlies this season. He has been dangerous for the Marlies, and he proves it there. You're right. The veteran Bobby Butler gets his 16th of the season. And how about, how many times do you see opportunity at one end, throw back with a good job by fending off uh, Spencer Abbott and right back the other way. You got a little drop pass in the slot area and a terrific wrist shot right there by Bobby Butler, his 16th of the year. And with just under five minutes to go, San Antonio is gonna make this a game. No question, it's now 2-1. Off the draw, Marshall comes back. With Brennan. Focus from the Marlies. And Cowden plays it ahead. Gilroy still working. It goes it toward the net. And that one doesn't find a way to get in. Racine plays it back into the corner. Howden picks it off. Comes after a, off a couple. And now Brandon Cozen plays it all the way down the ice. This will be picked up for icing and brought back with 427 remaining. Well, it's all about response now here for the Toronto Marlies. They give up the first goal to San Antonio, 4.27 to play, and you know, you've got to get back. 
can't panic, and I think that's something where, you know, you've got some veteran leadership here in the TJ Brennans, the Marshalls, and a lot of youngsters up front, but, you know, they bring this home as they've done many times this season thus far. Round behind, Greg McKay getting after it. Butler there. Up along the near boards, Whitney trying to get to it. Marshall comes back. He's got Brandon Cozen to work with. Out of the corner, sending it back up high. Butler winds up, takes a shot, redirected wide. Marshall moving it up, kept in. Wilson going to the net, looking for a pass out of the corner. Marshall making sure that doesn't happen. Now, Wilson moves it back into the corner. He'll head to the net. Missed pass by Butler, and Brennan is able to flip it and goes nowhere with it. Marley's are able to make a couple of changes on it, though. Now, Brandon Cozen, who's been caught on for a long time. Long shot on Drew McIntyre, who quickly recognized that some people got to get off the ice. Well, that's exactly right. But again, a mental error right there. T.J. Brennan got to get to the red line to get that puck deep. San Antonio right back in this one. 2-1 the score with 3.32 remaining. The GTHL playoffs are in full swing and you can catch all the action Sunday night at 8 p.m. here on Rogers TV. The playoffs not that far away for the American Hockey League, although it is uh, probably six or seven weeks, truthfully. Yeah. That's not a lot of time. Well, it's not, but there's a lot of jockeying for position and... You know, you got to give San Antonio some credit here. They got down in this hockey game early, and they've continued to battle and scratch and claw. And, you know, there's a reason why they've won six consecutive games coming in. And you get a goaltending performance after, you know, the first guy lets in two on the first nine shots. Markstrom's been strong ever since. Trying to make that tic-tac toe work, but there was no toe on it. Here's Smithson. Hammers a long one in, and out of the glove of Marshall, he plays it off to his man, Whitney. San Antonio playing with some confidence and a little bit more enthusiasm and maybe even the momentum currently. Trying to get that back out front. Holzer there to pick it up. Three minutes left to play. Duco tried to tip it back out. Shaw plays it along. McFarlane tied up. And at the line, it's kept in once again. Not for long as Duco falls and then tried to chip it back the other way. McFarlane was offside. It looked like he may have kept his skate on, but that's not how the official saw it. Well, I think it toe came up in the air, and that's was the official right on the line. Pretty good call there, but again, the Marlies, you know, Michael Duco has the puck at, you know, five feet from the red line. He loses his balance and goes down, but he's got no player near him. Take your time, get back on your feet, try to get to that red line and get it deep. You turn it over, and it almost you know, comes back the other way, but if not for the offside. Levo trying to work it back into the San Antonio zone. Out there for a spin. It's knocked in past Bramberg. Percy comes back, pick it up. Tries to play it along, gets some opposition from Shore. Back the other way it comes. Lebo trying to steal it out of there. Does that. Great Works work back with Lebo McKay. Right there on the boards. Josh Lebo sends it down into the corner. He'll go after it. Trying to take his man out of it. Now he hangs on just for a brief moment there as he was uh, supposed to be going to the bench. Now he goes. He thought there might be an offensive opportunity. Oh. Bramberg tried to play it back the other way. Butler stepped in. He goes after it. It's Percy Ross along the far board picked up. Brad Ross knocks it all the way down the ice. Minute you know, 47 left to play. This is a play where you know we always talk about the little things in games that add. You do the little things well and you know you're going to come away with the victory. Right here Brad Ross when the puck's coming around the wall he has to sense that there's that player coming behind him that's coming to pinch. Step towards the puck. Uh, as we look at Levo there, he did a wonderful job of being strong on the puck, on the wall in his own zone, gets it out, wins that one-on-one -on -one battle on the boards five feet from the blue line, and you get pucks out. That's how you win games by winning those little battles. Ross takes a swing at it, nearly knocks it out of the park. That'll be a strikeout. Down into the corner goes Cozen. Marley's now trying to press a little bit here. 
Up 2-1 with a minute and a half left to go. Expect Markstrom to start heading toward the bench. A little bit of a bouncer. McWilliam, Markstrom still in the game, picked up. Here's Cozen, Gary Domingo on the ice. You had to know he was in this situation. Greg McKay hangs on, plays it around. Domingo has Boulder back up high. He decides to go backhanded down for Greg McKay as they try to cycle it out of the corner. Levo is right there. Levo hanging on to it. Gets pressure. Less than a minute to play here in the third period. The Marlies up 2-1 toward the net. Gilroy cuts it off. Hangs on and waits. Comes back out, gets by his man, and the Marlies are able to get there quickly. Pulls it. Got by a couple. Levo trying to get after it. Whitney taps it along to his defensive partner. The Rampage trying their darters to get it back inside the Toronto zone. They do, but not for long. Less than 30 seconds to play. Here's Whitney with it. There goes Markstrom. Taking the chance. Back into the Toronto zone. McIntyre. Wanted to play the long to Holzer. Little miscommunication. Shot by Shore. But it comes up and not out. Now here's Jerry D'Amigo with the empty net in front of him. Man. He's the king of the empty netters. He is. He finds a way. Cozen picks it up. Out front. There was McKay. Less than a second. Long shot by Shore. The Marlies pick up a win here on home ice on a Saturday afternoon and end up sweeping the season series with the San Antonio Rampage with a 2-1 win this afternoon. Yeah, full marks for the Marlies. They came to play for 60 minutes, and yeah, they give up one goal with about just under five minutes to play in the hockey game to allow San Antonio to, to try and get the push on to tie things, but the Marlies held tight defensively, only give up one goal in back-to-back -back games here at home now, and they're Four and two in the first six games of the homestand and full marks for the big two points here today. Drew McIntyre, as has often been the case throughout this season, comes up big in the third period when the pressure is on. Yeah, no question about it. That veteran leadership we talk about, you need your goaltender to stand tall if you falter a little bit. And again, McIntyre, his 24th victory on the season. Good on him, boy, I'll tell you. 10 seconds in, it was Tyler Biggs, and then Jerry D'Amigo at 10-24 as the Marlies put two behind Bull's eyes as they pick up two points and the win here on a Saturday afternoon at the Rico Coliseum, 2-1 against the San Antonio Rampage. Thanks so much for enjoying Marlies hockey.